Where is the sharing button actually? Uh, So first I will talk about astronomy and astrophysics. Astronomy is the science of study of celestial objects such as stars, planets, moons, galaxies. And it also includes many interesting objects about which you might have heard like exoplanets, black holes, comets, interstellar mediums, AGNs, quasars, and even the study of whole universe that is known as cosmology. Okay, so now what is astrophysics? Astrophysics is the study of physical properties of these objects. Uh, so as you must know, uh, the origin... Sorry. Simon, sorry, actually beginning was just an introduction. There was no sound. Now everything is okay, I guess. It's nothing but uh, our scholars, Suman Sagayas, will be giving a talk for 15 minutes and followed by question and answer session under the title of Do you want to become an astronomer? Since the, there is a repeated question always about the career related of uh, uh, questions from the students. And there are other backend students uh, helping you as uh, my Swastik and Manjunath and uh, Subham Aratrika will be here. So you can wait for until the talk over. Then uh, we can uh, answer all your questions. Hope now audio, video, everything is fine. Yeah, you can continue. Okay, hello everyone again. So I am Suman, I am a research scholar here, final year PhD student. And today I will talk about uh, astronomy and how to become an astronomer. So the title of this talk is, do you want to become an astronomer? So first, let us start by talking about astronomy and astrophysics. So astronomy is the study of celestial objects, such as stars, planets, moons, galaxies, etc. It also includes many interesting objects, such as exoplanets, black holes, interstellar medium, comets, and you might have heard AGNs and quasars, and also the study of the whole universe that is known as cosmology. What is astrophysics? Astrophysics is the study of physical properties of these objects. So as might have heard, the origin of universe or where the uh, planet comes from, how they're evolving and uh, what is going to be their composition, what is that going to be their fate? All these questions come under astrophysics. But nowadays, both astronomy and astrophysics are uh, used interchangeably and uh, that uh, includes the study of uh, anything beyond our uh, planet. Who is an astronomer? 
that the astronomer is a researcher who is working in the field of astronomy and astrophysics. Uh, so he is also known as astronomer or astrophysicist. Now, what are the various research aspects in astrophysics? One is theory, that is the uh, studying the theoretical background of any uh, aspect of astrophysics or astronomy. And then there is observation using various telescopes, starting from optical to infrared to IR and radio telescopes. So these observational data are analyzed to study various properties of these objects. Then there is computation. Computation includes uh, computers and uh, various uh, high performance computing facilities. And these are used to model, simulate and various such things. And there is also instrumentation. So these telescopes and all are instruments that are used, but they are also need to be built. And they are also need to have few uh, future aspects of this research. These, these are all included in instrumentation. So after talking about astrophysics and astronomy, now I will tell about how to become an astronomer. So what the career path you should choose as a student to become an astronomer. So first step is uh, class 12. So as you know, after 10th in many parts of India, you can either choose science or arts or commerce. Obviously, if you want to be an astronomer, you have to choose plus two in science, but also you need physics and mathematics. That is compulsory sub subjects you need. Uh, after that, if you are interested in science, you should, uh, you should go for BSc and uh, try to get physics as a honors subject. In some institute, it is not there. Then take physics, chemistry, mathematics. That is also fine for BSc level. But in MSc level, you should go for MSc in physics. Also, if you are interested in technical path after 12, you can go for BTEC. That way is also fine. And But there, you have to be careful choosing the branch of engineering. So the, the major branches are electrical, electronics, mechanical, computer science, or engineering physics, these are all acceptable for having a future career in astrophysics. Uh, also, after BTEC, you can go for MTEC in similar branches. So, after both MSc and MTEC, you can directly apply for PhD in astrophysics. Uh, and uh, how to apply, what are the exams, I will come to that at a later slide. Also, there are few other parts, like after you have done MSc, but you are interested in this instrumentation or technical aspect instead of science aspects. Then you can also go for integrated MTech PhD after MSc. Also, there is a way after BTech, you can go to integrated MTech PhD that will include this instrumentation part. So uh, basically after MSc also, you can do MTech in India and also in B after BTech, you can do MSc in physics in India. So these parts are also open, very general knowledge thing. So these are the parts you can take to become a uh, research scholar doing PhD in astrophysics in India. So next I will talk about what are the exams you need to qualify so to apply to these programs, PhD or MTech PhD both. So first you put to apply to any of these programs, you need to be a graduate, either BSc completed or BTech completed. After that, you can apply for either these three exams you might have heard, NET, CSR NET, GET and GEST. These are very common exams and most of the people uh, actually know about it if they are doing uh, bachelor's or master's. So in NET, there is one thing called JRA, the Junior Research Fellow, and another thing is called LS. LS is for lectureship. If you qualify JRA only, you can apply for PhD. And for GET and GEST also, there are uh, uh, qualifying marks, but the better rank you get, the better chance you get to apply to higher institutes. So if the institutes are very high standard institute like IIEA, so they will require very high rank in these exams. So always aim for better rank as possible. Then there are few exams uh, conducted by individual institutes like IIEA ST, IIEA screening test that is conducted by IIEA. TIFR conducts TIFR GS graduate studies exam. And INET is IUCA National uh, Entrance Test or something like that, admission tests that is conducted by IUCA. All these exams are inst institute level exams. Uh, and these exams are for PhD. Now for MTech PhD, basically some people are from uh, BTech background. They can, this NET and JES, they have to give in physics only. But uh, GET, they can give either physics or EC or mechanical. Few other branches are also acceptable, but be careful 
when applying to the institute, you have to be careful which branches uh, get marked they are accepting. Also, IIA is giving uh, this integrated MTech PhD course, so IIA HD is also applicable. So these are exams you came to know about. Now I will talk, talk about what are the institutes that you should be targeting for doing a PhD in astrophysics. So in India, there are few institutes which are specialized in astrophysics. So only research on astrophysics or related subjects are going on in these institutes. So they are IIA, Ayuka, Ayuka is in Pune, NCR, NCR is also in Pune, Eris, Eris is in uh, Uttarakhand, Nainital. So these four institutes are uh, astrophysics specialty institutes. So here, uh, major research area is only astrophysics or related fields. And there are some institutes where instead of means not only astrophysics, but few other fields of science are also there, but they have separate department for astrophysics. So these are TIFR, RRI, RRI is in Bengaluru, PRL is in, in Ahmedabad, then IIST is in Trivandrum, and then IISC is in Bengaluru. So these institutes, there are separate astrophysics departments, astrophysics programs. So they are also very good opportunities. And then there are many other institutes, like uh, many other uh, scientific research institutes are there, where there is astrophysics uh, research opportunities. Then there are many universities where also these opportunities are there, and IITs also, and ISARs also. So for this, you have to go and search individual websites of these institutes. And when they are uh, accepting PhD students or MSc students, you have to go and see if this astrophysics specialty is there. And if they are accepting astrophysics uh, student for astrophysics specialty in the given year. OK, so these are about PhD institutes. And except PhD, there is also MTech PhD program, which I have already mentioned before. So IIA is giving this opportunity, MTech PhD program. Also ARIES, as I told in previous slide, it is in Nainital. They are also providing this MTech PhD program. Apart from them, you can also go to masters in uh, astrophysics, MS, that is available in IIST or in Iser Kolkata SSC, there is also space science MS in space science program. Also, apart from that, if you are uh, doing MSc or MTech in any subject related to physics or astrophysics, you can also do the MTech or MSc project at ISRO. Also, in many other institutes, also that is possible. You have to go and explore these opportunities through websites, the institute websites. Okay, these are uh, I told about PhD and integrated PhD programs. Now. Uh, if you are interested in astrophysics, you are enthusiastic in astrophysics and you are planning to become a researcher in astrophysics, join a PhD, before joining PhD, you should be doing few things that will help you to become an astronomer or make you ready for interviews and uh, more competitive in the, uh, in the market. So the first thing is summer schools. It is very important. So if you are doing BTEC or MSc or even BSc in some cases, you can apply for summer schools and many institutes, which I mentioned in the previous slide, including IIA, NCRA, IUCA, IIST, many institutes are uh, giving this summer school. So you keep on uh, browsing these websites of the, these institutes and have a look for this summer school uh, whenever this notice is out, you apply for them. Also, apart, uh, just like summer schools, there are summer internship programs or winter internship program or sometimes just internship in between any part of the year is possible especially through this uh, dht inspire program if any of you are uh, have uh, qualified for dht inspire after 12th you are eligible for going for internships uh, during your bsc or msc so that also uh, option also you can explore there is also one uh, association called indian um, academy of sciences they also provide summer internships so you should go and explore these opportunities. Internships in astrophysics will be really helpful if you are going to apply for PhD. And these interviews, they will ask you about what, if you have any prior experience in uh, astrophysics research. And having this internship uh, experiences will really help you out. And then these programming skills are very, very important in this uh, th these times in, uh, in future it will be even more so i remember few years back uh, our stephen hawkins has told in future programming has to be very very important if you are going for any research in any field 
so that i also very much appreciate that uh, point and i will urge you all if you are interested in research not only in astrophysics in any field of science go and learn some programming especially python or matlab these are very high level languages apart from them there are c c++ fortran which are taught in course work of many bsc or msc programs whenever you are getting this opportunity go and learn in this programming languages and then there is a specialization in uh, msc so you uh, all might have known whoever doing msc or going to do msc there are few specialization papers wherever you do it and uh, this astrophysics specialization is available in some institutes i am giving one or two examples here pondicherry university is there osmania university is there where this astrophysics specialization is there you should go and explore other universities uh, website also i i think there are 10 or 20 universities or iits nowadays which are giving specialization in astrophysics having this specialization will also help you a lot when applying for interviews so uh, these are uh, till now i talk about uh, opportunities in india and what to do about them also there are large number of opportunities outside india like uh, us or european countries japan southeast asia and many other places there are large number of opportunities in astrophysics so either be it masters or even bachelors and then phd or anything in uh, future after phd there are lots and lots of opportunities outside india so if you are interested you should also go and explore these opportunities so here i have given some of the useful links so whichever institutes i have already mentioned in the previous slides i have given link to all these institutes i have also given link to two job registers this as is astronomical society american astronomical society and this is link for astronomical society of india so these uh, links you, you will get posting about phd positions or internship positions many job opportunities uh, about uh, post about job opportunities you will, you will get and this will be very helpful if you are interested in this fields Uh, thank you that will conclude my talk and these are few social media and email and websites of iia that you can um, that you can follow and contact us through thank you Yes, sir. You are. You are audible now. Yes. So many of you like to answer that. Okay, so what is the question? Can you repeat? Can you increase a little your volume? If you have a degree in BSc Mathematics, can you join? BSc Mathematics. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, BSc Mathematics it is very simple. You go on pursuing your uh, masters. After BSc Mathematics, you can apply for MSc in Physics also. Uh, some universities may not accept it, but there are a large number of universities which will actually accept it. and if you have ms in physics then it is straight forward go for phd that's all so basically you have to prepare little bit for this masters msc physics in entrances i think because you have to know a little bit of physics also to crack this entrances you should go that way uh, mm -hmm. okay integrated msc phd are available in many ijs actually in some iit also give it uh, 
and uh, so if you are in bsc you can uh, go for jam exam actually jam also jest you can go for and uh, jest will you can apply to few of this uh, research institute like i think um, uh, iser uh, pune and all they all give this program integrated msc phd and iisc also i have heard integrated msc phd student you go ahead and explore this uh, websites of all these institutes which are in jest gst jest exam list and also jam exam list and you will know a lot about these things so there is lot of opportunities actually Yeah. Um, so yes. Uh, Arthi, am I audible? Oh yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to take. Uh, uh, I'd like to answer that. So basically, yes. With uh, in chemistry, if you have masters, you are eligible, but not in IIA currently. Do not have such kind of programs, as far as I know. Um, but with chemistry, there are fields like coming up now, astrochemistry, and there are people who have been in IIA who actually worked. on such kind of fields let's say on atomic and molecular physics uh, that connects to the um, to the stars and galaxies but in uh, as per the requirement iia requires you to have a masters in physics and mathematics if i am not wrong so yes so you can do it i mean there are scopes for it not i mean both in india as well as abroad but you need to look for uh, such kind of things but it should be connected to your topic of research Uh, I also add to that, like in abroad, especially if you go for integrated fields of research, many institutes are there who are giving interdisciplinary fields of research in uh, masters and PhD programs. Integrated MSc, PhD are there or MS, PhD are there. That actually you should explore abroad. There is more opportunity in this type of fields, I think. Am I okay? So. Just like uh, I like to say, through that you get a you get a good time. You can get a yes, integrated programs. I think the sound quality is not good. Uh, so I'm can you hear from? Yeah. Now. Is it okay? Please put it here for something. Then it will be good. I think. Hello. Hi, hello. Yeah, you are audible, but sound is not clear. It is echoing, I think, because of the hall. It is echoing a little bit. So, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. 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 I was saying that uh, after your twelfth standard, you can appear for exams yeah. like. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, we can't hear you. Uh, hello. Yes, I also can't hear Subham. Yeah, Subham and Arati, we can't hear you. uh basically yeah so suman can you would you like to answer the question if i think okay. we lost i i can answer yeah so after b 12 you can definitely go for uh, this integrated bsms that will be very, very good option if you can get into isers or uh, nizer so i think in nizer you have to give some uh, 
NEST exam, something called NEST or ISAS also there are exams, you have to see their websites, I don't know exact name, but uh, this uh, integrated BSMS you can definitely go for it and uh, uh, in IIA now actually uh, this undergraduate program isn't there in IIA because it is a research institute, so I think you have to uh, complete this uh, BTEC or MSc. Uh, if you are interested in BSMS, I think you are interested in complete MSc. So MSc is equivalent to MSc. So you can either complete BSMS or BSc then MSc, then you have to apply for IAEA. That is the way. I think there are two computers. Uh, Aratrika, we can't hear you. You, we are getting echo from you. Could you just uh, check it once? Hello, am I audible now? Yes, Aratrika, you're audible. We can hear you. Hello? Oh. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask the questions uh, after this. Uh, so, Startup Sanatana asked whether IIA Bangalore offers any online courses. So, so can you, can Swastik please answer this question? I, I didn't get your last part. IIA Bangalore offers what uh, I didn't get. Uh, offline co online courses. Sorry. Whether IIA offers any online courses. Uh, no, we currently do not have any. I mean, due to COVID, yes, most of our curriculum have shifted to online. So in that way, yes, I mean, uh, I mean, during the COVID time, we had classes online. But uh, on the other hand, let's say when you when you ask for online courses, I mean that if any online programs are provided for MTech PhD or something like that, in the answer would be no, we do not have any kind of online programs. Mm -hmm. All of our pro programs are in person at the campus. So we do not have any um, correspondence or distance learning programs in IIA. So moving on to the next question, uh, this, uh, this is also from YouTube. The question is, what are the degrees and courses I need to do to become an astronaut? So uh, Shubham, can you please answer this? Yeah, sure. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. So uh, the question basically is, uh, what are the courses you need to do to become an astronaut or something like that? If I'm, if I heard it correctly. Astronaut. So, yeah. so what I suppose you mean by astronaut is flying into a space flight, right? So, uh, as far as I know, you need to get basic trainings in uh, flight, flight, uh, running the flights, and you have to be a uh, a, a, a pilot of a of a flight. Um, which which such courses are offered at aeronautical institutes in India as well and abroad as well. So, I think you mean by uh, by astronaut, you mean this thing. Yeah, I am. I'm adding to well, that. So yeah, yeah, like uh, you know, you can go for any aerospace engineering courses. Hello. Yeah, am I adding? Yes. 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 Your, yeah, you can go to the any aerospace aerospace engineering courses after you are plus two or uh, something like uh, you know um, what do you call aeronautics. So if you have uh, that background, it would be good. Either you can go for uh, mechanical engineering also in BTEC. Uh, ECE also. After that, in your master's, you can pursue uh, your um, like uh, you know aerospace or uh, um, or aeronautics. That will give you yeah there is a chance to become an astronaut. Yeah, Shubham, can you please answer this question? Mm 
es, es, Aratrika, you are mute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the next question is um, yeah, it's also from YouTube. Uh, Gauri, Gauri something. Uh, they are asking, we have to write any entrances. Do we have to write any entrances to pursue PhD in other countries? Um, anybody would like to answer or I can give an overview? Yeah, so let's go ahead. So basically, there are certain set of exams that you need to qualify when you're going abroad, depending on the country. For example, if you're going to US, you need to clear GRE. Now, there are two kinds of GRE. One is your subject GRE and one is your uh, normal GRE. Normal GRE basically tests your ability for uh, verbal and quant, uh, quant aptitudes, whereas for subject GRE is basically related to the subject. So if your subject is physics, you have to have set for physics GRE. So GRE is kind of normal GRE is mandatory requirement for most of the universities at the US when I was a student. Uh, now due to COVID, some norms might have changed. Another exam that uh, they require mostly is either you have to have 12L or IIELTS because um, as we are not a primarily English speaking country, so to test your ability on English speaking, so you have to qualify this test. These states are kind of a scaled test. Uh, by scaled test, I mean that uh, there are scaled marks, not absolute marks. So basically for GRE and 2FL, you have to sit for the exams and you get a scaled marks. And based on that, your admission uh, depends um, on a particular institutes. So yes, you need to give certain, for European Union, I think only your 2FL is mandatory, um, 2FL or IALTS is mandatory for some institutes but uh, mostly GRE is not compulsory in that way. Uh, okay. I think, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, um, there's another uh, question from Gaudi. Um, uh, what, uh, what's the sort of the range of the rank to score that we, that one needs to score in JS in order to get a PhD at IA? So this one can sum an answer. Yeah, I can. I think uh, in jest, if you are uh, in jest or get or net, whichever you are giving, uh, mostly you try to get within 100 in physics. Within rank 100, you will be able to apply to most of the institutes, including IIA. And uh, uh, that is, I think, uh, that will be enough. Uh, also, I think in jest, nowadays only uh, around 150 to 200 students are uh, like qualifying. So any rank should be fine in jest. Thanks, Uman. Uh, I'll take two more questions from YouTube, then I'll concentrate on uh, this uh, uh, Zoom questions. So Rajpal Singh is asking, I have done my B.E. in Polymer Science completed in 2008. Currently, he, uh, they are aged 42. So he's as uh, asking, how can I learn and move ahead in astronomy? Shubham, would you like to answer? Uh, I, I'll give answer to that, basically. Okay, so, okay. Um, uh, if uh, so, if I am, uh, if you could repeat, uh, can I, I just wanted to know what what is his qualification? Can be is it B Tech or M Tech? In oh, he, has, he has done a BE in polymer science. Bachelor of Engineering in polymer science. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So basically, um, well, um, to become an astro astronomer, as Suman has stated in his slides, you need at least um, a master's in um, the subjects. We we should have maths and physics. So the current step would be to get a master's degree. So first things first. So to have a master's degree in physics or mathematics or related subjects to astronomy, and then looking forward to pursue um, astronomy and astrophysics uh, in abroad. Because in India, if I'm not uh, wrong, the maximum age limit for JRF is around 27 years to sit for that exam, right? So um, I do not think directly by IAE or any other institutes you are eligible to sit for the exams. Uh, just correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that is the current criteria. So one can try abroad or different other institutes, but standard institutes which Suman have listed in his slides, I do not think there it is eligible to apply uh, given the age limit as well as the, as well as the person is a uh, graduate in a subject which is not directly related to astronomy and astrophysics. Uh, I will also add to that if you are interested in like amateur astronomy, so there are 
Arius. Amateur astronomy means you uh, go ahead with telescopes and uh, view the sky in various events happening, uh, astronomical events happening like comet shower, uh, like meteor shower or anything like comet passing or eclipses. So there are various uh, astronomic clubs in Bengaluru. There are, I think, more than one in various ma major cities also there are several clubs are there so you can also you can buy a personal telescopes and learn several things how to become an amateur amateur astronomers there this was a particular question you can search in google also you'll get many answer to them. so if you are thinking astronomy as a uh, like a passion instead of profession then this is the way you should so uh, i have a question for suman uh, which is more related to the uh, last discussion which uh, I were trying to explain about uh, the amateur uh, astronomical courses or, or maybe uh, as a starting point. So uh, for completely uh, novice people to start with something as a, as a starting point uh, for any standard telescope, what would be the best, uh, I mean, base or maybe the optimal rather? Uh, starting okay. point with the telescope because if you see there are a lot of many options and those people who don't understand anything about all the various lenses and all mm -hmm. uh, I think if you can share some uh, guidance how and where from to start uh, okay thank you for this question so basically uh, there are few ways to go uh, one way is uh, learning by yourself so there are many uh, guide that uh, guide uh, for this, uh, both the blogs and uh, video guides, how to become an astronomer, starting with a telescope, starting with a amateur astronomy telescope. There are various guides, but if you are living in India and if you have very good passion about it, I will suggest you to go to one of our astronomical observatories. In South India, in uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, there is one observatory called Bhainubhapu Observatory that is in Kavalur, and they uh, they allow for sky watching. I don't know what is the process in this COVID time. There are some restrictions, but in normal time, they allow for sky watching every Saturday. Uh, there may be some few changes. You have to contact to those people in IA website. If you go to Kavalur uh, Observatory and you can find this information, whom to contact and all. And if you go there, they will show you sky watching using normal smaller telescopes. You more, which the size is used by amateur astronomy also and you will get few tips from there also if you are uh, staying like in one of these big cities i told like bengaluru or few of these like delhi or and all i don't know exactly but bengaluru i know for sure there are these amateur astronomy clubs like in bengaluru we have bengaluru astronomy club so these uh, if you can join one of these clubs there are many experienced amateur astronomers they will guide you through this also, various universities also have these astronomy clubs. If you are not even part of one of these university, but you can contact them through Facebook. So I was in Pondicherry during my master's, Pondicherry University. Their physics department and astrophysics and other various other departments, students uh, collab to make an astronomy club and they do sky watching generally. And so one of these astronomy clubs also you can uh, contact through Facebook and all and you can ask them what, like what how to start in and if you can contact them and go have a session with them from there i think you can start and then there are various books and all you can follow and uh, in our uh, ia itself we are uh, publishing a six months uh, biannual magazine called tooth so i am the chief editor in that magazine currently and if you see that magazine uh, published in every six months november and may so we give the sky chart and events happening in every month. So they are also, if you are an amateur astronomer and you can follow these events, and these are taken from the websites only. So these websites you can also check directly. You will see what are the events are there and that you have to follow. And there are actually a lot of things in amateur astronomy that I am also not very aware of because I am more of a professional astronomer than an amateur astronomer. But yeah, these are few tips I can give. Then you can go on exploring and many other things about it. Yeah, that, that's really helpful. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Suman. So I'll I'll just ask you two more questions. We're almost running out of time. So Hasnain Koser asked in the Zoom chat. He was a, one of the participants in the quiz in the morning. He's, he's asking, universities, universities abroad offer undergraduate program in astrophysics. Should we choose undergraduate graduate in physics or astrophysics in that case? 
Swasti, would you like to answer? Uh, it's a good question, actually. Uh, not only abroad, but in India also, as Suman showed, that you had specialization in both physics and astrophysics in MSc as well in some places. So the point is, um, according to my opinion, if I give, I would suggest going for our physics degree will be better compared to astrophysics at this stage when we're in masters. The reason for this is because when you take up physics as an undergrad subject or as a master subject, you got to learn a lot of things, starting from mathematical physics to from solid state physics to a lot of diverse field. So basically these things will help you in uh, to explore the fields of astronomy in future or any other field you go. Uh, let's say today uh, you are in astronomy, tomorrow you might change your field to something nearby, right? So it's always better to have an option in that way. If, let's say if a person gets opportunities for both physics and astrophysics, I would recommend my personal opinion that uh, to go for physics in that way. Uh, there's one more thing which I personally feel that uh, why one should go for physics is that uh, let's say you take up a astronomy in your master's or you take up astronomy in your undergrad and uh, you don't like the subject, let's say for some reason, not everybody will like the subject professionally, right? So the options get limited after you are done with your master's because you have done a specialization in astronomy and astrophysics. But if your specialization is, is, is physics and if you are master's in physics, there are a lot of opportunities. You can go to astronomy and astrophysics, you can go to condensed matter physics, you can go to any, any branch of physics, you are always welcome. So the number of options are also quite large and diverse. If you like astronomy and astrophysics, you can still pursue it after master's in physics. So I think in that way, I would recommend you to go for a physics degree compared to any specialized, not only astronomy and astrophysics, but also any kind of specialized uh, physics degrees. I think, uh, yeah, Sastika, I think very, I will agree with him actually at this point. I will also add a few things. So actually in India and US, when you go for any PhD degree, they give one year coursework. So if you are from physics background, anything in physics, it is fine. You can do this one year coursework in astrophysics and you will learn a lot of things to start with your uh, PhD work as a researcher. And uh, sometimes this having a specialization or having internships and all actually helps instead of having fully astrophysics. And MS is different. MS is after BTEC, that is for who are going uh, doing only BTEC in any field, they can go for MS for in astrophysics, that will help them. But if you are going for Europe, actually they are they don't have this coursework and all. And some uh, countries like uh, uh, France and all, they, they have one year MS program. And they expect that you to have some uh, background research interest uh, and experience in that field you are going to do PhD. So if you are interested in Europe, to do PhD in Europe uh, and you are getting a BSMS in astrophysics, uh, I think that is a better option for Europe. Yeah, I think that will help. Okay, <clears throat> thanks a lot. Yeah, Krishnan, uh, can we take any more questions or should we? Two, three, okay. Uh, so, so um, on, uh, on Zoom, there's this question. How does one go about in becoming an astrobiologist? And uh, they also want to know more about the scope of astrobiology in India. Yeah, if uh, I may answer. Yeah, sure, please. Yeah, the to the first question, how does one go about in becoming an astrobiologist? So in India, you need uh, to be an astrobiologist. You need to pursue a doctoral degree in relevant areas of research. As I've already mentioned in the chat box, we have one institute in India based in Bangalore. Its name is Jawaharlal Nehru Center for advanced scientific research, JNCSR. They basically work in interdisciplinary areas, like they combine biology and chemistry along with uh, astrophysics. And uh, they, they go about doing research in the same area. So if you are interested, you can visit their website and find out more about the institute and uh, their, their intake and uh, when, when they open for admissions and all. To the second question, uh, the scope of astrobiology, uh, you know that there are multiple missions that uh, that uh, all, all the major uh, space agencies in the world, they do. For example, NASA, they send rovers and, uh, and robots and everything to Mars and they look for existence of extraterrestrial life or, uh, or signs of uh, existence of water or plants or life, basically some life on, on, uh, and on a planet such as Mars and uh, others. So, there, uh, you, these people, they need astrobiologists to figure out these things. 
so it's basically it has a lot of scope you can uh, search about it on internet you will find lots of answers to that thank thanks a lot shubham uh, so do you have answers for more questions or should we end the session here krishvin yeah that was uh, that was answered quite at the uh, at the beginning of the interactive session Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Nivesh would like to say a few words. I'm handing it over to you. Yeah, so thanks everybody. Before we close and move on to the final session, uh, the penultimate session where we announce the winners of the contest, uh, I would also like to kind of add to what Kispin said, uh, that there are many ways of doing astronomy as well. So if you're in a big city, please do visit your local science center, local planetarium. If you're in a city which has astronomy institutes, go see them, ask them for projects in summer and winter and so on. And given the interest, what we will do is to organize such an event a bit long, in a, uh, properly a few months later, a much longer event, which is a bit more comprehensive. So please watch our uh, social media for that. In addition, uh, sometime in the middle of this year, the Astronomical Society of India is going to bring out a career brochure, which covers astronomy opportunities across the country, academic opportunities across the country. So please watch out for that as well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh,